Um, hey, man, you said it's after eight? No, I said it's 78 here already. We were talking about the weather. Oh, oh, I thought you talked about the time frame. I said, where are you at? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we real late then. Yeah, yeah. Or you on vacation somewhere <laughs> enjoying yourself. Probably all the way over in Texas or someplace, and you are having fun. Good, good. Who else was that? Good morning, Good morning, man. Good morning. Thinking about you, praying about you yesterday. Uh, who else? Who else on the prayer line? Yes, I was thinking and praying about you yesterday. Hey, Amen. Who else is on? My mama, I hear her voice. Well, I tell you what, I tell you, I, I tell you what, I tell you what, because we got a lot to accomplish this week. Um, let, let me make sure we're on Facebook because I don't want anybody to miss this prayer, this, this week in prayer. We are doing something. Are we on? Yep. We are doing something this week that I've never done before. And that is praying for mothers, specifically for mothers. Generally, I, I pray for the sick. I pray for, I pray for those who are, are um, trying to be healed. I, I, I pray a lot of prayers. And on, on the prayer line, I have never prayed for um mommies. Uh, a few years ago, um, oh, it's, it's probably probably been about maybe 15 to 20 years ago, I started praying specifically for women in our church who could not have babies or was having problems having babies because of what me and my wife had experienced of losing a child and um, and desiring to have a daughter, we have all sons. We we have two sons. I had asked God for a daughter and two sons, and I got I got the first son and got the daughter, and and she did not survive. And um, and and anybody, if you will be honest, if you and I won't, I take that word back. I don't want to use that word honest because. It sets up a conflict by a person said, wait a minute, wait a minute. And, and I just removed that word honest. If, if you can understand what I'm saying, anybody who has lost a child, there is some element of anger, hurt, embarrassment, and humiliation, and for me, humiliation is to, is different from embarrassment. And and you feel as if no one can understand you, and then as a couple, it strains your relationship. It as and and I don't know if any of the women who's ever lost babies can attest to that, but it strains your relationship. And so coming out of that. Um, in the ministry, I just wanted to understand from the word of God what he, what he meant when he said that, um, that, that, that we could go to God and ask him for anything. Because in my experience, nobody wanted to talk about the pregnancy until after that first trimester. And people would say to me, Pastor Ho, Pastor Ho, don't tell anybody. Don't tell anybody. Or Pastor, I didn't tell anybody because they were waiting to get through that trimester and they didn't want to get their hopes up. And so I started focusing my, my teaching and my understanding the very first second I heard a person getting pregnant, a woman getting pregnant from the very first day and I would tell her don't fear we have to talk about this we have to get the saints praying about this and I would give them scriptures and scriptures and then pretty soon the church was just bursting with babies and people used to joke and say don't come to faith life if you don't want to have a baby <laughs> and uh, 
And, and that was not because we were some baby factory. It was because we were believing God in an area. And so today, this week, I want to pray specifically for mothers, mommies who are young mothers, mothers who are experienced mothers, experiencing a child through adolescence, through teenagers, through young adult, and then grandmamas. And grandmamas are a potent tool and a weapon in your family. Do not misunderstand the power of the grandmama. There is wisdom, years and years of wisdom, years and years of experience, and years and years of knowledge that are a reserve to, that are reserved to, beg your pardon? Okay. That, and and that that is available to mommies and mamas. Grandmamas are powerful too, especially a grandmama who is saved, a grandmama who who understands how to translate her experience from one generation to the next. So I want to give you four verses today for for people who are not pregnant. If you are online. Uh, if you're on the phone line or you're online and and you know of a woman who's having pre problems having pregnancy uh, and problems in pregnancy or you know of a person who desires to be pregnant you want to share this prayer or you want to invite them on on the prayer line with us this morning four verses I want to uh, I want you to write down even if you are not pregnant because I'm going to ask the Lord to reroute pregnant women your way. The purpose of this prayer is directly for those who are pregnant. But as a prayer warrior, I want, I'm asking the Lord to route women your direction, female or male prayer warriors. And I want to give you the tools where you can minister to them in, in a way that their faith can be heightened, their confidence in their God can be heightened, and then the strength, and then there be a strengthening of their body to, uh, to go through the pregnancy and then to come out of the pregnancy in the area of postpartum uh, recovery of their body. That's the focus of our prayer today. So we're praying for health, we're praying for body health, we're praying for faith, and we're praying for, <coughs> excuse me, and, and we're praying for a, a pool of people in their life to keep them encouraged, to keep them motivated and focus on that day of birth and beyond. Psalms, so I have four scriptures, Psalms 127 and three. Let me read that. Psalms 127 and 3 says, Lo, children are in heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. And before I start studying this verse, I thought this verse simply mean that children are in inheritance. But if but a word study on this word literally means that children are both, uh, children are a promise, children are a gift, and children are a responsibility that comes from the Lord. The child itself that you are raising is a gift from God based on a promise of God. And I'm, and I'm gonna give you these promise, a few, uh, one promise. Hear that again, because this is most importantly for you who, who are attempting to have children to understand the purpose of giving birth is both covenant and promise. The covenant of the blessing operates within the family, and that's why the devil fights your family. That's why the devil targets your children that's why the devil seeks to corrupt them at an early age before they can determine themselves who
who they will be. Because the Bible says children are a promise from the Lord. It's a promise, but the children are also a personal gift. And then there are a set of responsibilities that come from God. And, and two of your responsibilities is to train your children in the way that they should go. And when they are old, they won't depart. And then to teach them those that are taught of the Lord, great shall be their peace. And that word peace seems, that word peace is literally defined as perfect well-being, pros spiritual prosperity, freedom from fears, agitated passions, and moral conflict. Pastor Hope, what does that mean? That means you are training them how to use prosperity for their family and the kingdom of God. You are training them how to live successful in this life. You are training them how to walk free of fear and not to be trapped by the, the, by the, the problems that is in this world that comes from a rebellion against God. You literally are training a new generation how to model God's plan in your family. That is what this passage means. First thing I need you to understand about parenting, about that child that you birth, and for you mothers who uh, have been asking God for, uh, for a child, that baby that's getting ready to come, and you who are looking to be pregnant and having problems, before I begin to pray today, I want to teach you that very fundamental truth about you being pregnant. That your baby is part of a promise that God made to you and about you as a woman. That baby that God is going to give you is a gift to you and to the Father. And to the Father. And to the world. And then you have a responsibility to train the child in the direction that they should go. It literally means point them in the direction that they should go and, and they will not depart from that direction. And then it says, and then to teach them how God's word works in this world and they will have peace. Psalms 127 and three. Psalms 113 and nine. 113 and 9. It says, He maketh the barren woman to keep house and to be a joyful mother of children. Praise the Lord. The second thing I need you to understand about being a mother before I pray for you to get pregnant. Because we are praying that you get pregnant, and in the name of Jesus, you will get pregnant by faith in the word of God. In the name of Jesus, we're going to pray that you ovulate. In the name of Jesus, we're going to pray that that seed and egg join together. In the name of Jesus, we're going to pray your womb holds strong. In the name of Jesus, we're going to pray that birth become uneventful. In the name of Jesus, we're going to pray your body recover. And then in the name of Jesus, we're going to pray that child lives long, lives strong, and be happy. And that prayer is based in Psalms 127 and uh, 3 and then 113 and 9. Here is what God wants. He wants you to keep house. Mothers, he wants you to keep house, to create the family. Yes, father's involved, but we're talking to mommies right now. He maketh the barren woman, that woman who could not be pregnant, that woman who people said something was wrong with her, that woman who, who had a desire, a secret desire, like the woman of God that the prophet prophesied she would have child, that woman who has a secret desire that she feels cannot be met, that woman who keeps saying her biological time is, is, is approaching, God is saying to you, he will make you keep house. He causes the barren woman to keep house and to be a joyful mother. Joy just simply means happy. 
He wants you who are mother to be happy with your children. He wants you to be happy and he wants your children to be happy and serving God. And then at the tail end of verse nine, and he says, praise you the Lord or thank God for that. God, this is your will for me that I was once barren and now I'll keep home. I'll, I'll build a house filled with my child, filled with my children and I will be happy. And God, I thank you for that. Then the second verse we're going to read is Exodus 23 and 26. Give me a second. We're going to get there. Exodus 23, 26. Exodus 23, 26. Psalms 1, uh, 113 and 9. Psalms 127 and 3. Exodus 23, 26 says for this, For there shall nothing cast their young, nor be barren in thy land. This is a promise from God for those who will serve and seek and obey him. Look at verse 25. And ye that shall serve the Lord your God, he shall bless your bread and water. He will take sickness afraid away from your, from, um, he will take sickness away from the midst of thee, there shall be no one that is barren in thy land. There will be no one who will cast their children prematurely. That is a promise of God that you opt in and you act on faith. This is one of the passages of scriptures I personally use when I bless my food and I believe God to keep sickness out of my house. I used it when the pandemic came, I use it for flus, I use it for everything. Sickness cannot come into my house because of the word. And even if I sneeze, I say the Lord has promised me. This passage right here. And if you are seeking to be pregnant, this is the passage I spoke to my da my daughter-in-law when, when she lost one child and was uh, her and her husband was attempting to get pregnant again. This passage right here is where her faith was based on. There shall be none among you that shall be barren. There shall be none among you who will uh, cause, uh, whose baby will come prematurely. And that's what we define. That's what we decree to faith life. There will be no barren women in our church. Any woman who wants to be pregnant, the God of heaven will do it. In Jesus' name, and we thank you. And then the last scripture we want to read is Galatians 4.27. Four passages of scripture I want you to meditate. I want you to share. I want you to share with a, a, a woman who is struggling in the area of birth. I want you to share with a woman whom the, do the doctor has told them you, you're going to have to end up in bed, sit in a chair, or what have you. Uh, uh, women who have weak wombs, women whose, uh, 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 what's that, um, the um, the bag that the baby's in, what do you call that? The um, placenta, um, whatever, is 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 leaking. I, I, I'm, I'm, I don't know the doctor term right now. The placenta is leaking. We are praying that all of these things, all of these problems, all of these issues come under the power of God's word. And then Galatians, the fourth chapter, verse 27. It says, for it is written, rejoice thou barren, that bearest not. Break forth and cry thou that travailest not. For the desolate have many more children than she which hath a children. And that does not mean she's a whore or a slut. That means the woman who people said couldn't have babies, the woman who believed she couldn't have babies, the doctor report that said you couldn't have babies, he's saying break out and rejoice. Get ready to have your baby. Get ready. Go to the store and buy a box of diapers. Start picking out names. Start preparing that room. 
that child is coming in the name of Jesus. And we decree it to be so, and we give God praise. Amen. 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 And we give God praise. You tell your daughter-in-laws, your friends, your friends' daughters, you tell people you know who are struggling to have birth, you tell people you know who have had babies aborted, and now the devil's trying to tell them because of what they did, they can't have a baby. You tell them to rejoice. The God of heaven that forgives will not only forgive them for that, but he will heal their womb. You tell that person, that woman, who the doctor has declared that fallopian tube is blocked, you tell that woman, the Lord has decreed that that fallopian tube will open, seed uh, eggs will pass in the name of Jesus. You tell that woman to pray for her husband, who the enemy, uh, who the doctor have said they have weak sperm, they cannot uh, have seed. You tell that man to get ready in the name of Jesus. You tell that person who is going to the doctor for in vitro, tell them get ready. You tell that person who whatever the process they use, be it faith, medicine, uh, a medical field or whatever, tell them to get ready. Their day of being without a child is coming to an end in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 John, do you have a scripture today before I get moving? Yes, I do. What do you have? Amen. It is God that worketh in you the will to do. And in this instance, Father, I thank you for the desire to be a mother. That's his will. Pastor, how do you know it's his will? Psalms 127 and 3. Children is, an, is a heritage. It is both a promise. It is both a gift. It is both a responsibility. All three. So God, I pray that you work in me the will to be pregnant. I pray you work in me the faith to receive this child in my womb. I pray and I receive the child in my womb and I pray he or she is carried full term in the name of Jesus. I pray that as soon as possible, you will assign that child a name and you will begin to teach that child what thus saith the Lord, because a child that is taught of the Lord, great shall be his peace, great shall be her peace. And in the pregnancy and the deliverance, this child shall know peace in the name of Jesus. Amen. Anybody out there know of a woman who has had or is having problems having children? I want to pray for them. First name only. You who are on the line. What is it, Tiffany? Who else? Who else? That's it. All right. Father, in the name of Jesus. You hear me who are barren. You hear me for those who have said you can't have children. You hear me those who have in the darkness of their hour, in the fear that grips their heart when they ask, the Lord encourages you to believe. He encourages to believe that whatsoever you ask for, God will perform it. Mark 11, 23, 1 John 5, 14. The Lord Jesus Christ hears the cry of your heart. 
hears the cry of the father's heart, hears the cries of you as a couple, and in the name of Jesus, the Lord grants your desire. He grants your desire of your family. He grants the desire that you will receive the promise and the gift and the responsibility of raising that child, raising those children in the fear and the admonition of God. That children who are taught of the Lord, great shall be their peace. I decree in the name of Jesus that you will be pregnant according to the word of God. Exodus 23, 25, 26. I decree God's word that you shall carry your child full term in the name of Jesus. I decree God's word that said your child shall be mighty in the land. And I decree in the name of Jesus, you shall watch your child grow and mature and become a, con a, a contributing member in God's kingdom and this society. That's our prayer today. I pray that the Lord gives you a desire to ask. He works in you the will to ask. He works in you the faith to ask. He works in you the faith to, to hold your body and to ask in faith and to, and to believe God's word. He works in you that when you hear something that says uh, the total opposite, you will not be weak in faith, and but you will, you will consider God's word that says rejoice. I'm praying today that the faith in God's word, that the faith that comes from the word of God, the faith that comes from these little four verses will stimulate your faith, will activate your faith to believe, and will give you faith to carry your child full term. Exodus 23, 26, that your child shall not come before time that your child should have an uneventful pregnancy, that your child shall be birthed. I hear you that say, wait a minute, what about me and my child that's in the hospital? Oh, we coming Friday. You, We are coming with a prayer Friday for you. This is for the mom who could not be. This is for the mom who they said would never have. This is for the mom who drives down the street, goes in the grocery stores, walks around the stores just to see little babies. This is for the mom who stands in store aisleways and smells little babies' clothes and goes online and buys clothes. This is for you in the name of Jesus. Your house will be filled with the cry of an infant. Your house will be filled with the laugh of a child. Your house will be filled with the noise of Christmas and birthday shopping. In the name of Jesus, I declare it to be so to you. And God, we give you praise. God, we give you praise. We are praying that you are strong. We are praying that you are healthy. We are praying that your pressure holds, your sugar holds. We are praying your womb holds. We are praying that all the mechanical function of your body holds in the name of Jesus. We are praying that those things that have been declared wrong in your body is corrected in the name of Jesus. We have decreed and declared the interest of a good doctor, the interest of a good nurse, the interest of good people in your house. We have prayed that the environment for you will be sufficient for you to have faith in God. We are praying for the environment of your home, the environment of your friends, the environment that you walk in will be conducive for you to have joy. We are praying the spirit of fear. Good God, be gone in the name of Jesus. When you look in the mirror, your belly swells as that child grows. There will be no fear. When the enemy tells you that this child will be stillborn, this child will be corrupted, in the name of Jesus, the Lord heals your child right in that womb. God, we thank you. 
We pray for the womb of those who have sinned, who have, who have sinned against their body through drugs and abortion and alcohol and things like that. The Lord who forgave you of your sin heals your body, Psalms 103. He says, and forget not that I am the God that healeth all thy, uh, all thy sins and healeth all thy diseases. The Lord causes you to recover that which you have damaged. The Lord causes you to be healed of that which you have wounded. The Lord strengthens your body so that you can rejoice in the name of Jesus. The Lord clears those people out of your life that says you, it's, you're not ever going to have baby because of what you did. The Lord causes those people to be uh, directed around you so they will not affect your faith. When the enemy tries to condemn you for what you did, the Lord reminds you of Micah 3 that says he has forgiven you. He has cast your sin into the sea. The Lord who, who does this will talk to you when the enemy tries to tell you what is going on in your body is because of the sin that you committed. Re rebuke that spirit in the name of Jesus. And God, we pray forgiveness and the feeling of forgiveness. We pray a removal of sin and the feeling that that sin has removed. The Lord said, and the prayer of faith shall heal and whatever sin you've committed, it shall be forgiven you. And in the name of Jesus, that curse that the devil's trying to lob in your family, be gone in Jesus' name. And then finally, be encouraged. Rejoice. Psalms 1, uh, 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 113, rejoice for those who said could never have baby. Rejoice for those who said it was too old to have babies. Rejoice for those who said you, you could not, nobody in your family, we all give no. Rejoice. Rejoice and receive in the name of Jesus, the Lord Jesus Christ, the healer of all diseases, the Lord Jesus Christ who answers prayers, the Lord Jesus Christ who died on the cross for your sin, heals your body, causes you to birth, uh, causes you to conceive, causes you to hold the child a full term, and then causes you to birth and to recover from the birthing process. We pray for you mothers who are struggling with postpartum. We pray for you mothers whose body is struggling to return back to normal. We pray for you mothers who is struggling, struggling in their minds, struggling in their emotions, struggling in their fears. The Lord Jesus Christ helps you now in Jesus' name. The Lord puts people in your life who will encourage you. The Lord gives you people in your life who will not say dumb things to you. The Lord puts people in your life who will strengthen your fear. I mean, who will strengthen your faith and ease your fears. The Lord places people in your life who will prophesy over that child life and health and strength. The Lord gives you people. The Lord gives you people who will travel the nine-month journey along with you and give you courage. Oh, the Lord is with you. The Lord loves you and he blesses you and he causes you to give birth in the name of Jesus. And God, we give you praise. Amen and amen. Amen. And we give God praise for you. We give God praise for you. We give God praise for you, mommy. We give God praise for you, mothers. We give God praise for you, grandmothers, who are keeping your children in church when their own mothers and fathers have walked away. We give God praise for you, mamas. You single mamas, you mamas who are married, you're doing it. God bless you. God gives you resources you, 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 you didn't even know was available to you. We give you praise, God, for protecting and keeping watch over these little children you've given us. We give you praise for keeping them from having broken legs, broken arms, and all things that people say is normal. 
We give you praise, God, for keeping bullies out of their life. We give you praise, God, for little children who, who have learning disabilities that have been healed. And in the name of Jesus, we decree their grades pop in 2024 like it never has been. We give God praise for children who the enemy said could never be. They bad. They baby's children. No, not so. The Lord touches those children and corrects those parents in the name of Jesus. And God, we love you. Amen and amen. All right, Alvarez. Oh, I forgot to see if he was even on there. One last thing I want to say, one last thing I want to say to, to those who are seeking to be pregnant. Meditate on the promises of God. These four scriptures, meditate on these four scriptures. Read them and begin to rehearse the testimony of those you know who have been in the same situation. Rehearse it to yourself and begin to confess God's word. It will build your faith. It will, it will increase your ability to believe God's word. Be careful of people who you listen to, things you listen to that says things counter to what God says. And then most importantly, thank God. Praise God for the birth of your child. In Jesus name. You all live long, live strong, be happy. This whole week is designed for mothers. Tomorrow we're going to be praying for mothers again. We're going to be we're going to be back at it praying for mothers again. And tomorrow let me tell you what we're praying about. Tomorrow we're praying for mothers with children, whether they be toddlers, adolescents, uh, uh, teenagers, young adults, old heads like me who have a mother. <laughs> We're praying for all the mothers, all the mothers who have children. We're praying for you. This lie that the devil has told you about your life being a waste, your life being fit for problems, we're fixing that. We're going to fix that this week. Have a great day. God loves you. Live long, live strong, be happy. Bye-bye.